We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. (laughs) It really is a great, great morning. 75 degrees outside. You can't beat that. Fall's going to be here soon. I know in some spots, you know, on the East Coast, we're already starting to feel that fall-like weather. Out here in Vegas, uh, still up in the upper 80s and 90s, but we are going to be dropping down into the 70s. And I'm looking forward to it. At night, we're already at 54, 62 maybe 65, and I'm loving it. It's great to open up the doors, have the screens and the windows open uh, to be able to uh, get that fresh air in the house again and take a break from the air conditioner. And yeah, jeans and jackets and sweaters. Are you all ready? (laughs) We've got my good friend. It's been a long time coming. Modestus Bukowskis is with us today. He is a professional MMA fighter. He's contracted with the UFC. I had the golden opportunity to uh, witness his fight, his his majestic way of how he maneuvers through the octagon. Uh, incredible guy, great heart. Uh, was there for the Q&A at the UFC Apex. Totally impressed me. Got a lot of great photos of him. You guys are going to see more of them. Uh, if you go to power985.com, if we don't already have uh, a photo of Modestus that I had taken there, I definitely want to get one on there and, and look through it. Definitely the ones not from the post fight to where, you know, he's not, uh, you know, where his face is still, you know, sharp and Gucci and very GQ and perfect. So definitely uh, let's look for one. And yeah, yeah, I, I've got him in there. I've, I've got two folders, but definitely I I want one not from a post fight, but he sent us over a couple. We may, but yeah, I want to put one up that I had taken. Awesome. Once again, we got Modestus Bukowskis with us today. Uh, MMA fighter, professional out of, he's a, he's a British mixed martial artist who competes in the light heavyweight division. And did you guys see the, uh, the latest? Well, head on over to his Instagram. It's at M-O-D-Y-B-24. I'm going to go there right now. Let's pull it up. Oh, I know. It, it's, yeah, there we go. You can't, look at that profile. Awesome. You get to watch the videos. You get to see more behind the scenes. You get to see him in the gym. You get to see him out in nature. It's beautiful. Modestus, it's been a long time coming. We've been working on this for a couple months, and we're finally here. Welcome to Power 98.5. Oh, thank you so much for having me, mate. Um, it really is an honor, and uh, uh, like I say, I really appreciate it. Absolutely. What time is it? It's uh, 7 o'clock where you are, right, out there in the U.K.? It's uh, just uh, it's quarter past six. Past six. Okay, quarter past six. Yeah, I don't know why. We need to start saying that here in the States. I like the way you guys do that, a quarter past six. <laughs> what, is that not what you guys say? No, we just usually say 50, it's uh, 10, 15. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I could help you with, uh, with, some, with some sort of English lingo, I guess you could say. Well, that's where we got it from. I don't know why it never – well, it, it was the same, but it changed throughout, you know, history, and I just wish it did stay the same. I, I would have loved to uh, spoke the way you guys do. Well, I guess maybe you guys just wanted to be a little bit more precise. It's, it's more precise to say it being a word, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, I guess whichever, whichever works, but I guess, you know, you can, you can impress your friends with – <laughs> with with being the English performance there. <laughs> What's life been like since we last spoke, we last met? Uh, any upcoming fights? What are you getting prepared for? It is the end of the year. Yeah, 
So uh, I'm fighting on November 4th in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm fighting uh, Vitor Petrino. He's a uh, So yeah, I've pretty much just been getting prepared for that, really. Uh, I just come off of um, shoulder and nose surgery, uh, things that I needed to get done uh, for a little bit. And maybe in my last fight, I may, I may have had a couple of issues with it. So, uh, yeah, I've got that all sorted. And, uh, yeah, I've been firing all cylinders for, like, the last, I guess, you could, I guess you could say, about four, four or five weeks. I recovered pretty fast. And, yeah, now I'm getting ready to go in enemy territory for the third time this year. I'm happy for you. I'm excited. I know you're going to do well, and you're obviously going to breathe a lot better since post surgery, no surgery, right? Oh, it's the uh, it's the Drickus Duplessis effect. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm better. I'm a ton better. I mean, obviously, the doctor says that you're probably still going to get swelling for even months after the surgery, but already I've noticed a, a massive impact. I'm feeling my cardio go. Already now going up to where it was before, and even 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 better than that. So, all the exciting stuff. Um, I'm already feeling the benefits, and uh, I'm looking forward to having those benefits on fight night. I'm excited for you. Honestly, you're going to do well. You've got uh, you've got a really great stage presence, uh, performance. You're very humble. Uh, you, you make a great family man. I, I believe over all in all in the world of MMA. And, and the UFC, uh, you are exactly what inspires someone like myself and what brought me wanting to get more involved into having more of your story, more of your identity out there um, on my side of the lane when I think of, you know, what I do in film and television, reality TV. You know, mm-hmm. you, are, you are great people and you represent – other great people in the industry, whether they're fighters or not, Modestus, you know, people that are hardworking, they, you want to provide, you take a beating every day, emotionally, mentally, physically, and you don't yeah. expect anything from it. And that's what's quite interesting is you put a lot of heavy weight on you in different ways. And the way you're so humble is very admirable. I, I really, like I say, I really appreciate that. I'm just, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be anyone else. I'm not trying to show out or, or anything like that. This is just, you know, me who I am as a person. And uh, like I say, I've, I've learned many experiences over the course of my life and throughout my career and stuff like this. My parents have brought me up really well. But I'll be really thankful for them. And, you know, I've, I've got amazing people around me and it just makes it, I guess it, it makes it easier to have a better character when you've got really good, uh, amazing people around you, people that love you, care about you, and you know ultimately want you to, to achieve your goals and dreams. So, uh, like I said, I'm very grateful, and uh, thank you for your very kind words, mate. You're welcome. And refresh my memory, are you a dad? Do you have kids? Sorry, mate, I lost you there for a second. No worries. Uh, do you have kids? Are you a father? Oh, no, uh, I do not. Uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, mate, uh, if I'm being real honest, um, I'll probably leave, you know, maybe having kids and starting a family. Uh, in my head anyways, I know it's probably, uh, you know, up for discussion. I, I know other people do things differently, but I feel like financially I need to be in a in a situation where I'm able to take care of myself, my family, and then I can start my own family. So, you know, I understand sometimes you can't plan these things and, you know, things come pro- uh, crop up unexpected. But, you know, for, for me as a person, I want to make sure I can give, you know, if I was to start my own family, you know, to, to, to give them the best chance possible. And the way to do that is by being, you know, financially more, more, more free or as free as I'd like to be in order to provide a great life for them. So, yeah, at this moment in time, uh, no, and uh, probably not for the foreseeable future. I'm going to honestly say it's, once again, I have to use the word admirable. It's responsible. And how how wonderful it would be when more people would put thought into the fact to where they would have the type of thoughts and mindset the way that you do. And I know things can happen, but you're the first person that I believe I've ever interviewed that's shared with me in such a responsible, selfless way of putting responsibility before your own internal desires or, um, 
ambitions like that because it's a lot to bring another life in this world and not be prepared. Yeah, a hundred percent. And and you know, like like I say, I mean, I understand sometimes you 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 can't you can't plan everything, but when we've got so much technology available to us, and there's so many ways to sort of be careful and to make sure that you don't you know sort of fall. In, and, and you know what, like, like I say, starting a family is absolutely amazing. But, you know, me personally, like I say, I just would rather put them in the best environment possible, be able to show them a good life. Of course, I'm going to teach them good values and to make sure that, you know, they're, they're, that they're not sporting and I have to learn how to work hard for everything and stuff like this, of course. But, um, you know, just to be able to provide them with things that will make them happy and, and, you know, and just like, you know, like myself and my family and just to make sure that everything is comfortable, you know. It's, I just feel like, You've got the choice. Why not do it that way as opposed to, you know, an accident out of, out of nowhere that's out of your control and then you just have to man up straight away. Like, you know, I'm, I've still got a lot of learning to do in my life. And, you know, even at 29, you know, I, I still feel like this. And I know every single year will be the same same thing. You know, I'll need to learn so much more. But, um, you know, when I feel like when the time is right, I'll know and I, and I want to make sure that I'll be prepared and able to, to bring on someone into this world and really take care of them and be responsible for them. Um, and so, yeah, ultimately, I've got many goals yet to be achieved before I can get on that level, you know? I respect your sentiments, and I feel the same uh, due to the fact that you may not know this, but I was adopted when I was nine, and I would like to share it forward by adopting a child or two uh, down the road. And there is a requirement that I have for myself that God, the universe, mm. everybody knows that I, I require and demand that I am in the best place emotionally, mentally, physically, and financially yeah. to make sure that my kids, when I'm ready to adopt, if it's meant to happen, don't go yeah. through life the way I did growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mate, I mean, like I say, I, I, I can imagine that must've been a, a pretty crazy journey for you having, having to be involved uh, in that and, and, and stuff like that. I mean, you know, going into a family that you, you know, you have no idea about and stuff like this, you know, it's a very, it's a very scary thing, but then obviously, you know, you do create amazing connections with people and people that you, that you end up, you know, loving and caring about same as, Funny enough, I um, I lived in America for two years. I went to high school in Louisiana, and um, the Ronkowski family—they're uh, an amazing family. And you know, I, to a certain extent, I, I I do feel like you know, you know, she she's like my mum as well, and you know, like and, and and the dad and everything. So shout out to Dina um, and Mike Ronkowski, um, always taking care of me, um, and still I still speak to them to this day. And you know, that was a while ago, so. Um, yeah, I, I can I can see that definitely uh, connections can be made, um, and yeah, create lo- love out here. You know, absolutely. And you know, I've got to ask: How does your mom, your dad? I mean, obviously, I believe that they support you, but we don't have these conversations, and most people, especially men, don't have these conversations openly. Um, if I may ask, if you're comfortable to share, what did your parents yep. say at all, or or anyone else in your family? What's the support system's been like? Oh, the support system with my family. I mean, obviously, so my uh, my parents uh, have split up. You know, they, they both got different partners, and uh, I actually I, I live with my dad to this day. Um, I've I've got a good relationship with with uh, with everyone, um, especially you know my mum and my stepmom. Um, as well, um, you know, like, like I say, I've, I've just created really like just really good and deep and meaningful connections. You know, my dad being my head coach as well, obviously the relationship stems further as well than, than just, uh, you know, uh, uh, a father and son and, you know, a coach and a student, you know, there's, there's so many, many things wrapped up into one. And I do feel like our relationship has grown, uh, over the years. Same with my stepmom, actually Rose, uh, she, I remember when she first got introduced to me, it was a couple of years ago, uh, or quite a lot of years ago, actually. But ever since day one, she's always supported me in, in what it is that I'm doing and to, to want me to achieve, you know, the highest levels of, of what it is that I'm involving myself with. And, um, yeah, um, 
my actual mum as well, um, you know, I don't think she's necessarily always understood what it is that I do. Um, even though, you know, my dad's a fighter and, you know, I'm a fighter, you know, we're going down the same path almost. I think it's probably a bit difficult uh, because, you know, they want you to be the most fine, you know, they want you to be okay. They want their, par- their, their, their kids to be okay. They want them to be taken care of and they want to make sure that they're going to be able to succeed and do things. And, you know, obviously fighting still a relatively new thing, especially the UFC and MMA. Um, so, you know, she was a bit skeptical at first, but I think as my, you know, determination and drive and, you know, success ultimately uh, has come about, I think it's sort of opened up my mum's eyes a little bit more. Whereas obviously my dad, uh, you know, he, he's the main driving force of my career. Um, you know, had it not been for, for him and actually my stepmom as well, you know, I wouldn't have come into the recovery from my injury as resiliently as I did. If you weren't doing what you're doing now, who would Modestus be in another life, lifetime or dimension? What would you be doing? Do you know what? It's mad. I've I've, I've been getting a lot more involved like with social media and that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know. I've always been an entertainer. Like it's mad because I went from like this kind of scrawny, not very confident kid to, but had like a lot of like an, energy and like people that are close to me I'd always be able to open up and just be a bit bit crazy and like out there and you know eccentric and I never really sort of got to show that and I feel like you know actually social media I know I know obviously uh and it's mad because academically I've never I've never really liked you know studying too much and everything I've always tried my hardest and you know um I've done okay in the in in the British schooling system um but yeah I feel like um, I feel like I'm a bit of an innovator and I like to be someone who's sort of against the grain. So it would definitely have to be something to do with some sort of media. Uh, you know, like I wasn't always the confident kid that I am now. Um, and I think for the longest time I was craving attention actually, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, I think that's actually been like a bit of a healthy thing because obviously now, you know, you tend to get a little bit more, more attention than I did when I, than I was young. And it's actually very, it's a very satisfying feeling, and uh, but I do think I'm meant to perform. So something to do with performing, uh, and definitely something to do with YouTube or social media or something like that. I think I'll definitely get involved with. Have you reached your maximum peak for what you've wanted to accomplish in your life? And if so, Modestus, do you feel it's time to pivot and add more to what you're doing on social media and maybe? posting on YouTube in general, Mm. what what I'm asking and why I'm asking this is I feel from, you know, getting to know you and having interviewed you and seeing you live at at UFC and taking a look at your socials. I believe that there's more about you that the world needs to know. And that's why we're doing this interview. And that's why we're here is I don't feel that you're hidden. I feel that more needs to be (laughs) spoken and shown. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, a hundred percent. And um, do you know what? I've been I've been working a bit more to, to 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 show more things. Sometimes you don't always capture everything. I remember actually after the Khalil fight and the and the really bad injury, I ended up like sort of recording myself a lot more. You know, I ended up you know doing more things on the camera, and that was able to like show people a bit of an insight onto my recovery and what it's like to actually come back and stuff like this. And I feel like I I still in that respect need to do more. I've got a lot of people helping me in terms of um, social media. I have, I have I have a really good friend Dan um, helping me with the social media side of things to to post more and do more things. And I think we are gonna get into more of like the miscellaneous things about myself that people don't really know about. Cause obviously a lot of it, you're trying to find trends like fighting and stuff like this. And this is all important in social media, which I had absolutely no idea. You know what I mean? Because all the outside things, although they're interesting, uh, you know, everyone tends to follow, you know, a trend. So that's the, the big thing to try and build up your following. And I think from that point onwards, I think as my career progresses, people are going to know more about me and because they're going to want to know more about me, I'm going to be more willing to share, I guess you could say. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's part of being relatable, um, you know, 
to the public and to and and to create a connection with everyone, you know, because essentially that's that's kind of what I want to do. Anyone that I meet that you know that's a fan of MMA and you know they know who I am, I want to create a connection with those people. And I think that's uh, that's why certain things in my life have sort of happened the way that they have. And you know, I'm no way near where I want to be, but I'm definitely within grasp of achieving my goals little by little. Ultimately. What, the, what does everyone in the UFC want to do? They want to become a world champion. To say that you're a world champion is a big deal, you know? I'm a Lithuanian-born slash British, you know, mixed martial artist that could rewrite history with the things that are possible with achieving the things that I want to achieve. And uh, it would definitely get my story out there a lot more. I feel like I've got plenty of time still, you know? Um, as my skill set in the technology side and you know with these people helping me uh i'll be able to do that a lot more but the story is slowly unraveling um like i say uh there's still much more to be done but little by little piece by piece people are gonna know what i encourage you to do and what i feel and what i see from the information i have in front of me and from this conversation what i hear from you And what I'm articulating is that while your mate who's doing the social media and videography, create a mini story, a documentary, a behind Mm. the scenes, a look at something that's passionate Mm. and run that through uh, a local film festival out there in the UK. Bring it possibly out here. Uh, to the States and do a mini West Coast, uh, New Santa Fe, yeah. New Mexico, uh, you know, L.A. film festival, uh, South by Southwest. That's what I would love to see more. And what I appreciate and something I had of a conversation with uh, Ray Sefo from the PFL is I love their videos. Their videos of what they do behind the scenes, showing those documentaries. I want to see that more from someone like you, from anyone from all walks of life. It's not just MMA. Is when we think about sponsors and investors and uh, allies and advocates and how you guys can create a business and whether you start your own fashion brand or a protein mm-hmm. shake brand, or if you open up a, a cafe or a, a health food store or something, people need to know and want to understand why they should invest in you. Time, resourcing, watching, buying tickets, showing up, traveling. I mean, you know, when I was covering UFC, uh, live over there at the Apex, it was amazing of the people who were coming from other countries just to support their their yeah, favorite fighter. Mad. Yeah, it's absolutely mad. Um, I actually had three of my very close friends uh, come out to watch my last fight at the Apex in June. Uh, you know what I mean? Like spending a hell of a load of money and, and you know, obviously their time and effort just to just to watch me fight. And I was, I was the first fight on the card as well. And they didn't, you know, they didn't even stay for the rest of the card. They just came to watch me. So, you know, I definitely feel, um, definitely feel very loved, um, by a lot of people. And, and, and it's amazing. And, you know, part of it, you know, obviously is obviously for myself and my own personal goals and, and, you know, satisfaction of, of achieving my dreams, but also for, 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 for the people around me, for the people that come up, for the people that are, you know, um, for the people that have sort of been supporting me uh, all this time along the way, um, and obviously they're they're all an amazing group of people. And um, like I said, there's it, a lot more to be done. I think success speaks for itself. Um, if you're constantly, you know, this game is 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 judged a lot by obviously your wins and your losses, and ultimately. The way I see it, I'm going to focus a lot of time and energy on on grabbing as much content as I can, and obviously improving my skill set and becoming the best MMA athlete that I can possibly become. Because with that comes the wins, with that comes the attention, with that comes, you know, all the other opportunities that are available. The thing that you have to do is to make sure that you're out there and you're winning and you're in the spotlight and you're doing things. Then it's mad because then everyone wants a piece of you then when I've been at my lowest points, people who I thought were my friends, you know, kind of let, left my side, thought there was nothing left.
Uh oh, did we lose him? Oh, let's get him back. Welcome to the EE voicemail. I'm sorry, but the person you called is not available. Oh, there Please we go. Leave. There we go. You're back. <laughs> oh, so, re- re- really sorry about that. Like I said, usually the signal's quite good in here, but <laughs> for some reason, like you know, just a couple of times. Yeah, sorry about that. No, you you were saying where we left off is the people you thought were by your side. Yeah, yeah. I've I've had you know, like I said, a lot of things come through sort of your wins your your wins and your losses and um you know when when you're winning you know you've got you've got the bandwagon you've got the you've got the fan club you've got everyone you know out there you know wanting to be part of the uh the victory crew and then you know when your losses happen you really find out who your uh who your day ones are who your close people are and um yeah it's 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 just mad because i understand that 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 is part of the game though you know, part of the game is you have to win and you have to win impressively. Um, and so, you know, you just got to make sure that you do all that can be done to make that happen. And then, like I said, then people want to take interest. And it's just the way of the world, you know, like it's, I don't speak badly about that because at the end of the day, it is what it is. And uh, I try and uh, shift the the right cards in my favor. So um, I do all that I can be done inside the cage to make sure I go get the win and then ultimately everything else comes off of that. And I, I just understand that. That's part of the world. You just got to <laughs> gotta do all that you can to get the win. And um, of course, I've got amazing people around me. I will continue to be the same person that I am. And then uh, the wins will help get my story out there a little bit more. What I appreciate is what you brought up is something that everyone goes through in some sort of time in their life, whether it's by someone they are close to or a stranger, or more importantly, we can do it to ourselves and it's betrayal. Mm. And what I have to say is as difficult as it may be, just as though you had expressed Modestus is, you know, when you think you have a support system or someone there or people are showing up or you're, you know, someone's promising they're going to show up and they don't, it is hard, and I know you do it, but I have to put it on record. It is better to know the truth of where 100%. somebody stands in your life than to never know it all, especially if or when you get to the biggest moment of your life and then or yeah. an opportunity, and then all of a sudden they're not there and don't show lack of support. You don't want that to sour your soul. And when you think that someone loves you and cares about you and respects you, and you put all of this investment of yourself into a situation, circumstance, opportunity, and even person or people, it can be mm. difficult. So when you have those wins, when you have those personal and professional victories, Modestus, just know that anyone that falls off from the wayside is not going to be stealing an opportunity from you and you are not going to direct your attention somewhere else to where you've gotten back your attention and you're able to give that all to yourself. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Like I said, I, I, I learned a hell of a lot of lessons. Uh, from a massive injury to being cut and and stuff like this, you you really start separating. You know, like I say, who who really cares about you? But at, this, at, the, at the same time, I just understand that this is part of the world. A lot a lot of the times, you know, people are sort of thinking about themselves, or that you know they might have their selfish intentions, and this is that. But it's just human nature. At the end of the day, it's sort of this is where I've I've sort of in my mindset, I'm still loving compassion. Uh, it's just me as a person. I can't change who I am. But at the same time, I guess you could say maybe a darker side has been has been brewed from from this situation. But it's almost vital for 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 the fight game. You know, like I say, I'm I'm the kindest, most loving person outside of the cage. But when you get in it, you know, you got a job to do at the end of the day. It's like any other job. And uh, you know, people are ruthless. And uh, you know, I just I I just accept it now. And and. I don't even look at it in, in sort of like a, in like a dark or a bad light. I just look at it like this is life and I'm just going to navigate around it the best way that I can. 
And um, to the to to those that that love and support me, you know, like I say, I show how grateful I am all the time. So, uh, yeah, man, this is a this is a mad roller coaster, and I couldn't I couldn't literally ask for anything else. I think that this is how it was all written for me. This is what you know. This is this is the gift that God has given me. In order, you know, it leaves its hardest test for its strongest soldiers, and I do believe I'm one of those strongest soldiers. And uh, I'm looking forward to all the other events in my future unravel. Well, we're looking forward to having you on again. You've got a fight coming up November 4th, correct? Mm. Yes, sir. And it's going to be great. And I hope that this, this interview has got you more prepped, prepared, inspired. Definitely would like to have you on again, whether it be uh, pre-fight or post-fight you have so much that you can offer and share. And definitely when we think about, uh, you know, our listeners and, and what's going on in the world, I want you to have this gift of, you know, being omnipresent. You know, you've got the, the people in sports, you know, the media that are covering this, people in MMA. And I just truly believe from the artistic performance the entrepreneurship of who you are and in being someone of talent, uh, you always have an ally and, and a support system here. And I just want you to know that. Oh, mate, honestly, uh, that means the hell of the world to me. Uh, like I said, it, it, it really touches my heart to have people like you, you know, looking out for me, uh, supporting me, wanting me to grow. Uh, it's just a, it's just a really beautiful thing. And, um, I, you know what I mean, I'm, 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 I'm honestly honored you know, to be able to do this, especially since, you know, this is a, this is a show in, in the U S and, you know, me being out here in the UK, being able to share everything and you've got an amazing platform and, uh, you're the man. I really appreciate you, mate. And, uh, like I say, much love and thank you. You are welcome. Any closing thoughts that you would like to share with us before we close out today? Um, the only closing thought I would have is that there's one thing that I wanted to do in my life that I think a lot of people strive to do and not, are not really sure how, but it's to leave a mark on the world. And the way that I can leave my mark on this world is to show anyone that they can come back from adversity. You know, I've been cut from the, I've, be, I've became Cage Warriors champion. I got to the UFC. I got cut to the, by the UFC. I became Cage Warriors champion again. And I'm now back in the UFC again and fighting for my next fight in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm getting to travel the world. It's just to show that as long as you're strong in your mind, uh, your body will follow. Um, and as long as you're diligent, um, you keep persevering, you keep that vision strong in your head. A lot of times people think, why the hell is all this crap happening to me in my life? But in reality, it's just, it's just to set you up for something better. It's hard to look at it at that time. Trust me, everything will work out. And um, like I say, you'll you'll be going on to your own greatness. Greatness, sorry. So I'm I'm what I'm really trying to say is that don't let adversity bring you down. Let it strengthen you. I appreciate that, and and thank you. Honestly, I I feel it, and it's it's real My and man. it's true. A hundred percent, mate. This is this is all coming from the heart. So uh, like I say. I just appreciate you giving me a, a platform to be able to to express all these feelings, mate. And, uh, mate, you've got a great show, so everyone keep tuning in, yeah? Absolutely. Who would you like to give a shout-out to? Uh, there's honestly too many people to even begin with, but I'll just go, I'll just go through, the, <laughs> through, through the list of people. Um, but BST Academy, uh, everyone at BST Academy, all my training partners, Will Curry, uh, Obviously, my dad, you know, the the main man, the general, uh, my stepmom, my mom as well. Um, I've got a lot of people that are around me that, you know, like I say, care and support me, uh, such as the Coachellas, uh, Paul Stain as well. Um, I've just got I, I've just got too many too many people that I uh, that I really love and appreciate, and and then there's many more to to even note down the, than what I've just mentioned. But uh, together, we're a team. And together we all uh, we, we're we're all going to make our successes. Um, and also, as well, thank you to Hodge Grace's Academy as well, um, and Prometheus Wrestling as well. So, there's my shout outs. 
Listen, whoever you may have forgotten and when you get off of this phone call and go on with your beautiful day, my friend, you write them down and the next time when you're back on here in November, you can read them off. Yeah. <laughs> One hundred percent, mate. And we'll, we'll just we'll just go straight down the pipe, mate. Straight down the list. We we'll have it all written down. We've we've, we've got a system going on, yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's all. What an honor. This has been. It feels really good. I. It, it's been a couple months. What since June? We've been working on this with our yeah. schedules and all. But it feels really good to have done it today and now. It feels very special, especially the fact that we get to cover what you did back in June, and now you've got November coming up. So we've got that sweet spot to where we've got the past, the present, and the future all rolled in one. Oh, mate, you've done an amazing job. Like I said, everything all works out. Do you know what I mean? Like the plan may may not have seen like pretty open at the beginning, but now everything's worked out amazingly, and I'm uh, I'm very grateful for that. I am as well. Thank you for being with us today. It's been an honor. Thank you so much, my man. Really appreciate that. Much love to everyone. And, uh, of course, have an absolutely amazing day. Hold the line, Modestus, real quick. Uh, We're going to close out. No worries. And uh, we'll have a a quick private chat. Thank you to everyone for joining us today, live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio, your number one destination for news, sports, music, entertainment, and more. Wow. I had to take a breath. Yeah. When they say the best things come to those who wait, this feels extremely good, and I'm grateful for that. Live life. Truly live life in a way where you're able to surrender to the gifts and the opportunities and the blessings that are out there. Yes, be, stay motivated. Yes, you've, it's important you're proactive. You work. You work hard. Whatever your definition is of what it is that you want to do and feel that you need to do in life. Some people believe that when you put 5 to 15 minutes a day into something, will accumulate greatness over time. Some people believe you spend hours Every day doing something, it's going to flourish and bring greatness and rejuvenate and enhance and enlighten and manifest greatness over time. Be easy and kind with yourself, whether it's five or 15 minutes a day or 20 hours you're putting in in a day. As long as you're feeling and believing and knowing that you are accomplishing and you feel gratitude and good and confident and happy and all those tingles and that warmth within and around yourself that you're accomplishing and you feel proud of what you're doing, that is more than enough because it's more than what you gave yourself before. And if you have to start out five minutes a day to work up to 10 minutes a day, whatever it is, whether if you've got or going through anxiety or depression or, you know, just like Modesta said, he's in the UFC, he's out of the UFC, he's back in the UFC. You know, he's getting surgery, he's training, he's healing, he's back in recovery and back in training and everything again. The only way, and I'm going to close by saying this, the only way, You can ever give yourself credit to say that you failed is to believe and to know with facts that you didn't do enough where you could have done enough. When you think it, feel it, believe it, that is the Trinity. The true blessings and gift is through divinity and that's through action. Take action. And if you don't want to measure your action, don't measure it. Just know that you took action to do something is always better than not doing anything at all. Have a great day, everyone. Friend us on your socials and let's connect.